Yeah, yeah. Uh, you have to let the participants in also? No, no, they'll join. So we have more than 64 people there now. Yeah, yeah. at the moment. They'll keep joining. Yeah. Okay. Fine. So let's start. Good evening and or good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm Nitya. I coordinate the India chapter for the Sustainable Sanitation Alliance uh, based out of India. Um, this uh, webinar is being organized jointly by three organizations, IRC, uh, Water for People, and the Susanna India chapter. And it's also supported by WaterAid, uh, India Sanitation Coalition, and UNICEF. So it's very much a joint effort. Uh, it is a continuation of uh, several discussions and webinars that we've had over the last uh, four or five years to discuss how best to implement the Swachh Bharat mission and now the Jal Jeevan mission. Uh, specifically, what are the institutional arrangements uh, that are required in the administration, in the technical wing, and in Panchayati Raj institutions? And how can NGOs uh, play a role in the entire process in terms of both community mobilization, technical inputs, and training? Um, so the two flagship uh, programs of the government, Jal Jeevan Mission and Swachh Bharat Mission, uh, are for providing uh, safe drinking water and sanitation respectively. Uh, all the three verticals, the administration, technical wing, and electric re elected representatives, that are the Panchayati Raj institutions, have very clear and strong roles to play. Uh, Non-government institutions, who, which have now been called implementation support agencies or ISAs, are required to give support in the form of community mobilization and training. But there are other roles that ISAs can play, and we would like to explore that as part of this webinar. Program guidelines, they allow for a lot of flexibility in execution, just as we saw in Swachh Bharat Mission Phase 1. But there are non-negotiables. The states and district governments can tweak the way forward to suit local conditions and decide how best to achieve the outcomes mentioned for both programs. <clears throat> to reach these ambitious targets, that is uh, piped water at home for all households and sustainable sanitation, sustaining the sanitation uh, uh, achievement so far, Panchayati Raj institutions need a lot of support to up their game. They need capacity building on an ongoing basis, not one-off or sporadic, they need continuous management and technical support as well. All the three verticals also need to take a systems approach rather than a project-based one. And all three, uh, if the services are to be sustainable and equitable. It is incumbent on ISAs, the administration and technical wings to provide professional support to Panchayati Raj institutions to fulfill and carry forward the agenda. Some pointers come to mind. We need to focus on outcomes with a long-term mindset. The larger support system in rural drinking water needs to plan for enabling panchayats and uh, urban local bodies to take over and manage piped water systems. Panchayats must work as equal partners with the other two wings. And the other two missions must take every opportunity to strengthen them. A suitable time-bound training strategy is needed that emphasizes outcomes. Panchayats can lead on certain aspects of pipe water supply or sanitation and outsource other work because there's a lot of technical work, there's a lot of construction work which panchayats may be better placed to outsource. Capacity building needs to be localized, contextual, intensive, and long-term. And there has to be a clear demarcation of roles between the three verticals, even as they support each other. ISAs are needed at various levels, but should not be bound to a specific set of activities. They also need capacity building in many cases. Um, so this panel discussion, we have structured it in a way to bring together people from the administration, and the technical wings 
as well as ISAs and from different states. We need to, they, they will discuss how to cover Jaljeevan mission and the Swachparan mission to goals. And uh, that because they're from different states, we'll be able to understand the, the challenges each state face, faces. Now, my co-panelist, my co-moderator is Mr. V.R. Raman. He's the head of policy from Waterdaid India. Uh, Mr. Arvind Chaudhary, Principal Secretary of the Panchayati Raj uh, and Rural Development Department from Bihar, will be joining us at some point during the uh, webinar. Ms. Misha Singh is the Chief Executive Officer from Dindori, Madhya Pradesh. She's one of the speakers from the administration side. Mr. Mahapatra, who's the Executive Engineer of Ganjam District, and Mr. Gopan Paul, who is the executive engineer of PhD from the Birbhum district of West Bengal uh, from the technical wing. And Mr. Vimal Dubey from NICYD uh, is an NGO in Jabalpur, which is also an ISA. So I hope we can have these multiple inputs and uh, be able to cover the various aspects of the discussion. We hope to cover the following areas of uh, discussion. One is, what is the vision of professional approaches to managing water supply as envisaged under Jal Jeevan mission that could be specific to states and even districts? What are the capacities that would be required in PRIs at various levels from the village to the block and the, up to the district level? How do line departments support the PRIs? And uh, this is uh, to keeping in mind that, it, that uh, Jal Jeevan mission and Swachh Bharat mission are no longer just the prerogative of either PhD or rural development. There are multiple departments, the health department, education department also that have roles to play. Have line departments moved to a systems approach instead of providing spot services or a project approach? And where is the change required? Finally, Mr. Bishwadi Ghosh, who is the country director for Water for People, will wrap up the webinar. Uh, we hope the panel discussion will last for about 40 to 50 minutes, after which we will take questions from the audience. Uh, we request you to put your questions in the chat box. And if you have a specific panelist in mind, please mention that. And after we are done with the webinar in a few days, we will be providing a summary along with a link to the recording. So, I think uh, I will hand over to Raman um, to say a few words and then we can start the proceedings. Thank you. Thanks uh, a lot, Nitya, uh, Vishwadeep, uh, Uchika, Shaini, and all uh, co organizers of uh, uh, this uh, webinar, which is quite important. We have been doing this uh, you know, as a series. Uh, as part of Susanna India Sanitation Coalition and all uh, various uh, partners there. So this is, you know, this webinar, as far as I am, uh, you know, concerned, what I see is that, uh, you know, we, we can get perspectives of the, from the top of the administration, from a person uh, who is actually running the show at the district level, uh, like Ms. Misha Singh, and, uh, you know, two engineers, uh, one from Orissa and one from, uh, you know, uh, 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 West Bengal, wherein you know we can hear a lot from how the uh, in the technicalities when it comes with panchayats, the communities, how you know that social aspects are married with the technical aspects, well or not. What all are the key issues there? How to overcome them? So those kinds of issues are going to be our uh, you know key kind of knowledge today. And then we will finally also reach how the implementation support agency is trying to uh, uh, you know support provide training, provide kind of uh, technical know-how, what all are the, uh, you know, uh, key things that they are able to achieve and what all are the, uh, you know, challenges that they are facing. And since, you know, that is the key thing that I wanted to highlight today uh, is the scale. When we use the word scale in India, one of the limitation of that word is it is not able to represent the scale of India <laughs> because uh, the, the scale is too, too uh, you know, <clears throat> vast. Uh, even that word is not uh, appropriate enough. Uh, to, to uh, talk about the, the, the vast nature of the country called India. So we have uh, at least you know, four states here, 
you know, we are covering Bihar, we are covering West Bengal, we are, we are covering Orissa, and we are covering uh, Madhya Pradesh. All these four together, uh, you know, only represents part of India. So that is the limitation that uh, we are going to face. We, we have more, uh, you know, uh, issues and more kind of uh, uh, challenges and more achievements. All of them together are there. But, you know, I'm sure uh, with, uh, you know, Madhya Pradesh, uh, with Orissa, with West Bengal, with uh, uh, Bihar doing a lot of efforts. Bihar, particularly, you know, in the water supply, uh, they are, uh, you know, at the 100% level. In MP, the training under... Uh, <clears throat> The Jaljeevan Mission and in Swachh Bharat Mission 2.0, uh, they have uh, you know advanced a lot. In West Bengal, you know they are picking up uh, in a in a very advanced manner. And in Orissa, uh, you know in both in urban and rural, there are a lot of lessons. These are uh, you know very very good examples of giving us. Uh, good learning. So that is what is my uh, hope for the day. And uh, NIWC, uh, CYD, uh, they are, you know, as an implementation agency has uh, proven, uh, you know, what kind of uh, skills are needed, what kinds of inputs are needed, and how to fill the gaps in terms of even in the NGOs, there are certain capacity gaps, how to fill that also. There are certain uh, examples and experiences that they are bringing in live to uh, this show today. So thanks everyone for joining this uh, <clears throat> uh, important webinar and thanks uh, IRC, what for people and uh, Susanna to organize this. Uh, Nitya, we can, I think, uh, proceed to the discussion. Maybe we, we are starting with uh, Ms. Nisha Singh, no? Uh, yeah, we can start with uh, Ms. Nisha Singh. Ms. Nisha Singh. Um, so, uh, Ms. Singh, uh, you've yeah. been working as the CEO in uh, Dindori and... Um, uh, Shajapur, yeah. actually. Uh, Nitya, just a small correction. It's Shajapur, actually. Oh, sorry. Area. I was on... Okay. Okay. Shajapur. It's a, it's a... Um, so, from the Shajapur perspective in particular and MP in, in general, um, can you give a kind of a vision, your vision of the professional approaches that are required uh, for water supply and uh, so, and uh, so, so sanitation as kind of uh, mandated under SBM2 and uh, Jaljeevan mission. Uh, given, you know, just keeping in mind that in both sustainability and equity are two big uh, planks. So uh, when you talk, maybe you can address those issues also. Uh, definitely. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you, IRC, Water Aid and Water for People for having us on this panel today. Um, as Mr. Raman and Nitya was just starting about this discussion and they gave us a very important point that when we talk about these two schemes, uh, the word scalable is not exactly representative of the uh, opportunities and the challenges which we have in front of us uh, because the heterogeneous nature of a community is also a part of uh, implementation challenges that come to us. It's not just the topographical issues. It is not just the water supply issues. It is not just normal issues, which we think from the technical point of view, because whenever we are implementing such scheme, we have to keep it in point that the sustainability also involves that how we are going to hand it over to the people who have to use it. How well are they equipped in handling it? So uh, let's start about Janjeevan Mission. Uh, as and when I uh, took on to this office, we were, the scheme had just been launched and we were told that uh, the most important, the baseline of the scheme is that every household should have a tap water supply. Uh, now, since I am as a CEO, we are also uh, overseeing the implementation of various other schemes. So one of the major issues that we identified from my district approach was that uh, in case if we have to supply this water to each and every household, we need to have a backend working, uh, which requires at the same time a sustainable source of water. So for the scheme, to actually deliver, we had to make sure that schemes like Narega, 15th Finance Commission, and other schemes were also to be put in to create those sources. Because as on today, we have divided Jaljeevan Mission into two blocks. One is a, a limited scheme that can be given from the already existing sources, and one is a multi-water scheme for which we have a detailed guideline which 
probably uh, Jal Nigam will be taking up from here and in which a source will be created somewhere and eventually all the multiple villages will be joined. But considering that my district in particular is very, is highly based on agriculture and the demand on water is equally strong for the needs of the agriculture. So there is a constant fight. So now when there is a source and we do have a national policy of water, but at the same time to convey this thing to the people that the first utility of the water will be for the drinking purpose. And then it will be coming from the agriculture. So it starts from there. So the scheme not only saw uh, a difficulty in the implementation in terms of source, but how will that source sharing will be done between various demands in the community. So that was one challenge for us in the very beginning. Uh, secondly was how to pool in the resources from the other scheme to the general generation, how to create sources which are sustainable in the long term, uh, for the long term output. And thirdly, the community is for now, as on today, but we have shifted to the third part of the scheme, that as in when certain scheme, the projects are being completed and we do hand it over to the Gram Panchayas, are they that well equipped to run it? For which, as of now in Madhya Pradesh, what we are doing is that we are identifying self-help groups and village organizations because we have realized that women is at the core of the demand for water. She is at the core for running the household needs. So directly involving them would create an important stakeholder who is also responsible for the running of the scheme. So we have entered into the phase where we are involving them and we are also training them for this scheme. Um, similarly, I can, um, I can talk about this thing that when we're talking about this scale, uh, even Madhya Pradesh, if you uh, talk about this as a state, it has districts which are tribal in nature. It has districts uh, which are highly industrialized. Uh, there are districts where the water shortage is very extreme in the Bundelkhal region. And there are districts which have big forest area. So um, I will not be that well equipped to answer for the different region, but my area falls in a uh, uh, region where the demand for the, the pressure on the land is very high because of the high income generating groups which exist over there. So um, as on today, um, our scheme and our implementation is highly focused on creating of those resources, number one, because uh, uh, Shahjapur district as on today stands at a critical uh, level for the uh, for the underground water level. So our scheme is working from the point of view from Narega, we are creating multiple water sources, we are recharging those sources. Uh, secondly, we are also uh, pitching in from the SHG and the PRIs as to the needs of it because an important part also for the scheme is that we take the inputs from the stakeholders themselves and how they want the scheme to actually unfold in that region. Um, and thirdly, what I have seen is that the, uh, the third party assessments and the third parties that are involved with us, they are playing a very crucial role for us because the uh, input which they give from the ground, as you have rightly pointed out, that it, the schemes are not just limited anymore to the government officials or to the PRIs. The NGOs, the third party auditors are also playing a very critical role. Thank you, Ms. Singh. So, Raman, um, would you uh, like to continue with the, uh, with the issue around Panchayat Kiraj institutions, the capacities, and what would be required to strengthen them? Yeah. So, uh, because Mr. Chaudhary is also here with the Panchayat. Oh, okay. I didn't. Uh, here. So, okay. we hear him first. And then, you know, come to that, uh, you know, it will be better. Sure, let's do that. I didn't realize he's joined. Yeah, yeah, he's already here. Okay. Uh, so, uh, yeah, please go ahead. Please go ahead. No, 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 go ahead, go ahead. Okay. So, uh, Mr. Arvind Kumar, to learn from you a lot. Uh, given the fact that uh, you know Bihar is a predecessor uh, when it comes to uh, Jaljivan Mission because the uh, the Sat Nishchai uh, program and the Harghar Nalka Jal has given a lot of uh, important lessons. Where you know you have uh, uh, 
distributed the responsibility between the rural development department and the panchayat raj institutions as well as the phed uh, so that that was a very a very interesting uh, kind of mix as far as uh, uh, we see this from uh, many other uh, you know states or part of the country or national even globally to to uh, uh, to speak so uh, so in in those aspects uh, you know what is the kind of suggestion that you have based on your experiences both of very important successes and also of some of the challenges you would have met on the way and you know you are trying to address them or have addressed them so what are the kind of key lessons that you would uh, you know suggest uh, you would like to share with all of us uh, during this webinar that is one second you know as a learning for the panchayat raj institutions the question that nitya was uh, putting to me the panchayat raj institution to strengthen them their technical capacities what will are the key things can, that state government can do uh, based on the uh, the the implementation of both uh, sbm and uh, uh, jal jeevan mission sorry the uh, har ghar nal ka jal program uh, in bihar over to you uh, uh, mr choudhary i am very glad that you are here uh, amid a lot of busy schedules of a principal secretary thank you so much Uh, thank you, Mr. Raman. Am I audible? Yes, yes, you are. Yes, you are. Are you able to hear me? Yes, yes we yes, can yes. hear you. Thank you. Uh, the net is as uh, well today. That's why I am uh, keeping the video switched off so that my voice is able to. Uh, thank yeah. you uh, for uh, conducting this workshop. Uh, this is a, a very important. Uh, aspect water is so very important particularly drinking water uh, reaching out to the people in their own households uh, that is something uh, earlier uh, one could think of having only in the urban areas and that too in slightly well to do pockets so having that kind of water supply uh, throughout the state even in the rural areas in the day to day at the first uh mr choudhary your voice is breaking how and uh, to tell you honestly some difficulty in the voice over yeah please go ahead please go ahead able to hear now yeah 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 yes we can hear you mr choudhary now i think mr choudhary is trying to rejoin so i think uh, yeah let's wait for a minute maybe uh, before we get into yeah he is ah, back mr yeah yeah mr choudhary is rejoined please go ahead you are uh, you are mute now please unmute and uh, restart sorry yeah are you able to hear me now yes yes we are yeah this is better okay so it was uh, actually a very big challenge how to ensure that the uh, drinking water is available uh, even in the uh, rural and far flung areas and not only that uh, i mean constructing this kind of scheme and uh, ensuring that it happens for the first time that is just one part of it but how do you ensure that this water supply remains there people themselves are able to take care of the entire supply scheme and maintain and run it uh, if government has the onus to repair and maintain uh, every time there is any issue then i i think it just can't sustain we find it difficult to uh, do the maintenance even in the urban areas it will be very very difficult if government has to do it on its own across the state and i'm i'm very happy to share that uh, bihar uh, i mean from where we started uh, maybe uh, i mean very small coverage of household uh, water connections from there to nearly almost 100% we are more than 97 98% co already covered now we are just looking at the households which are left out and we are trying to cover but 
a major challenge remains and i think uh, where the theme of uh, your webinar is very very uh, important and uh, uh, timely i would say is how do you capacitate people how do you capacitate people so that they are able to uh, repair maintain sustain uh, this kind of a scheme and continuous uh, continue it forever another aspect i think uh, which uh, the earlier speaker was talking about is what is scarcity so how do you ensure that the source that is there that is actually that remains sustainable source is readily available across the time and uh, uh, let me assure uh, all of you one thing just draw of drinking water from the ground is not something which is going to deplete the water sources ground water for drinking is not drawn in such big quantity that it will deplete the ground water you can uh, from your own experience you could uh, also find that if there is uh, one uh, bore well in a uh, village and it runs for about 2 hours then suddenly the uh, water level in the hand pumps goes down which are in the nearby areas so uh, provided that runs for the irrigation purposes so it is that which is uh, causes more ground water depletion so definitely water source sustainability is also one very important aspect but let me assure you just supplying water to the poor households is not going to deplete the ground water and uh, i am i'm many a times surprised and perturbed also that we never talked about uh, this issue when the water was being supplied only in the urban areas so everyone has a right to have uh, pipe drinking water in their household now the second part is uh, how uh, to ensure that the community actually owns it up and that is where i think bihar did one uh, innovation uh, i mean our chief minister under uh, his guidance we took a decision that this entire uh, work will be taken to the ward level ward is slightly manageable level typically uh, uh, one panchayat in bihar has around 14 15 wards one ward has around uh, 120 132 around 180 200 uh, households that is the size and one uh, drinking water system which is relying on the ground water primarily can easily cater to about uh, 150 to 200 households except for those areas where the uh, i mean because of geographical reason or because of distance all the households cannot be reached to take care of such eventualities the uh, scheme provided that more than one uh, scheme could also be made operational in one ward if there be such kind of a need so keeping these aspects in mind the program was designed ward is a small cohesive unit and people are able to know each other if anyone is misusing or if anyone is not paying the user charges people will be able to uh, i mean put kind of social pressure that is possible at that level and that is why ward was taken as that unit and i think it has uh, succeeded in a very uh, good way uh, even uh, uh, I mean, uh, the aspect that uh, Raman talked about was uh, dividing the work between PhD and uh, Panchayati Raj Department. It was primarily based on uh, whether the uh, water source that is there is water quality affected or not. If it is affected by quality, it was decided that the work will be done by PhD under uh, a more uh, professional, uh, I mean, uh, supervision and. Uh, other places uh, the work will be done by prd except for the places where the phd is already doing some work and uh, this worked very well 
uh, both uh, panchayati raj department as well as phd have been able to almost cover their entire area uh, we just had uh, a discussion with the government of india also just a couple of days back and almost uh, all these schemes have been completed except for some now one major challenge that remains is how to ensure that these schemes actually remain functional so for that the local level bodies are being capacitated many uh, agencies which are able to provide some kind of support they are being empaneled at the level of the districts and the ward implementation and management committee wimc which we present and uh, I, I think uh, not many states will have a formal uh, uh, ward structure of uh, this kind uh, by way of having it in its rules so this is part of the uh, panchayat uh, rules so that committee takes care of uh, the uh, in and if we are running thing now this is one aspect where the role of water for a very critical uh, and in some earlier work with akrsp and uh, other uh, organizations that it is possible to train and capacitate local people so that they are able to take care of this kind of a scheme even if we see in the urban areas most of the housing societies have their own water supply scheme which is taken care of by them so almost similar model you have and we uh, actually before designing this kind of uh, scheme we actually visited and saw some very good uh, examples on ground where this kind of scheme was functional for more than 2 years and not only that people who were managing around uh, 80 85 households were connected to that they were collecting user charges initially they started with 10 rupees per month per household and they increased it to 30 rupees over uh, one and a half year not only they maintained it but they also had saved around 14000 rupees in their bank which we could see from their passport so it can act we will ensure that not only the uh, scheme remains operational but the people own it fully they take care of it and they are able to carry on and sustain through the user charges now over here uh, since we have now the 15th finance commission and other provisions so there is a possibility that panchayats can also chip in a little bit uh, with some kind of support uh, for which certain provisions have been made in uh, bihar also and similar provisions can be made in other states as well uh, see the building ward is very very important and it is something which requires a continuous capacitating continuous capacity building training sustaining uh, maintaining their records accounts everything so that part is very very important another part that is important is that we should have more and more number of local skilled uh, persons who will be able to repair and maintain this kind of water supply system in is mostly the issues are very small not very big only when uh, there is some big issue then there are level uh, which in your implement this that is where i'll stop and uh, i'll uh, thank uh, the organizers for organizing this timely and very important uh, the findings from this webinar will yeah. 
thank you uh, so much mr choudhury before you i mean uh, if you are uh, continuing here we will be very glad because there are pertinent uh, important issues are going to come up but if you are leaving i have some uh, question before you do that one more question specifically you know you have highlighted two important aspects uh, you see here or just already here I don't see. You're clear, Naman. We can hear you. Huh? No, no. I was uh, looking for Mr. Chowdhury. Yeah, he has left already. Okay. So, okay. Uh, so I'll okay. come to that. Yeah, point again. So, uh, to Miss Misha Singh uh, and uh, Mr. Chowdhury had kept, uh, you know, particularly because you know the state administrator and the district level administrator who actually uh, make things happen. Uh, you are there at uh, you know <clears throat> the uh, Chajapur district. So, from Chajapur district's experience, currently we are putting panchayat some specific, uh, you know, kind of responsibility, which includes Jal includes Swachh Bharat Mission 2.0, which includes 15th Finance Commission management, which also includes. Uh, so, these are the flag flagship kind of uh, responsibilities going to them, and there are other, you know, kind of expectations of outcomes from the panchayats now. So, when we studied Bihar and Orissa recently, how they are able to look at uh, IRC and what it together. Uh, did this so 14 uh, finance commission expenditure levels were very low in most of the panchayats so in terms of uh, spending the money in terms of actually technically overseeing the work for technically overseeing the work they have to look at engineers one at a block level or uh, you know sometimes even lesser given the availability so look, looking at this technical and financial capacities of the panchayat what is the institutional element that you have a way forward Um, Raman, can you just uh, please repeat the last part of your question? Your voice was breaking. Just the last the, part of the question. Oh, sorry. The way forward for panchayas in terms of enhancing their financial spending and accounting capacity, also to oversee the technical aspects of a lot of outcomes that is expected out of there. Uh, thank you for this uh, question, uh, Raman. Uh, as uh, uh, Arvind sir was also telling, uh, there were multiple resources that have been pooled in together for making the Jal Jeevan mission a success, in which certain responsibilities were even put for the Panchayati Raj institutions as well. Uh, I'll talk in two perspectives over here. One is in terms of sustaining and maintaining it. And secondly is in terms of the financial contribution. So uh, during the 15th Finance Commission, when it, the funds was released for the state, a mandate, a clear mandate was given for the districts that the funds will be divided into two parts. That will be one will be the tied fund and the another would be the untied fund. So the tied fund of the total composition, 60% has been reserved for the drinking and the sanitation purposes. And 40% uh, of the funds have been reserved for the year 21-22 has been reserved for the untied expenditure, which is any other infrastructural projects that the panchayat can take over. Now, here we have assumed dual responsibility. Uh, one responsibility is that to ensure that when the planning at a particular panchayat at, uh, or at the village level is taking place, they have a very clear idea that a certain set of funds are to be exclusively used for the drinking and sanitation purpose. So that when a gram panchayat development program is being prepared, it is not completely moved in a single direction and missing out onto the important aspects such as water and sanitation. So this is a responsibility that we have placed onto them. Now, how do we implement this is a much bigger question that we have to face. Uh, so far, we have relied on the understanding of what the panchayats would need. They have a clear understanding onto themselves. How to get that particular thing done is something that a district administration has to take care. Of, wherein we had to ensure we had to we had to ensure that certain level of orientation programs were held, because when a gram sabha is being conducted. And when multiple demands are being put for the same fund, how the fund allocation is being done is something that we have to orient them. So this was one this was one challenge that we had to face. That is number one. And now that it is being done, 30% out of that 60% of tied fund has been exclusively reserved for the Jaljeevan mission. 
So this 30% is the fund that now panchayats pitch in, in case if certain projects, certain points of the projects needs further funding from the panchayat side. Another thing is that through the untied funds and through the other funds which are available at the panchayat level, which is largely from the point of view of Narega, uh, we are ensuring that panchayats again are pushed in a direction that source sustainabilities uh, are maintained and sources are further sources are being created. Uh, when we talk about source sustainability, it is being done in terms of creation. It is done. It is being uh, done in terms of rejuvenation and restoration, which again, uh, Arvind sir has raised very beautifully that when we talk about the source, we have to think in terms of the sustainability. The third thing is that how do, how do we maintain these projects? Now, um, a village level sanitation and water committee is created for this thing. The entire job of the village sanitation and water committee is that eventually this scheme, once it is uh, when this project is completed, this will be handed over to the village sanitation and the uh, water committee, which will be responsible for running of the project. Now, how does the project is being run is on a very simple thing. First, they have to ensure that the user fee is being collected from all the respective household where the tap water is reaching. That is number one. How do we fix it? That is another issue. Third is that how do we in, through these water and sanitation committees, how do we ensure that the technical part of the projects are also being taken care of? So for this, another uh, line department has pitched in, which is the skills department, whereas they have issued the guidelines that there are many youth within the villages and in the ward that do have prior skills in terms of electrician, fitter, and everything, where they just need to be again calibrated to the demands and they can be given a small orientation and they can be pitched in as a part of the village and the sanitation committee, which will thereafter look after the technical aspects of this entire scheme. So as on today, Shahjapur is implementing the scheme on these three points. The fourth point that I had pitched in that the most important stakeholder that we have realized over a long period of time is, is a woman of the household who has to ensure that the drinking water, the water for cleaning and everything is reaching in an appropriate way. We have also engaged SAG women into the collection of the user fees. This has not only helped in ensuring a regularity on it, but has also created a kind of a nudge that in case there were certain households which were not really willing or which were not really forthcoming, now, since the women, they form a very important circle at the village and the ward level, they have really created a, a system of nudge over here, and this has created a kind of a regularity in the process. So as of now, we are, this is in terms of those schemes where the water sources were available and we have rejuvenated or recreated them. Uh, in terms, we have to still see that how do we manage in where multiple villages are being sourced, and uh, multiple villages are being put together and the multiple water scheme is being created over it. So these schemes have not yet been implemented at our district. So the challenges as and when they come forward would be something which will be learning for us also and how we pitch in would be something where the, we will expect certain state guidelines to come to us and also through the district learning that we will be taking up. Thank you so much. Uh, Raman, you're muted. Uh, Nitya, thanks. Uh, thanks, uh, Ms. Misha Singh. And uh, Nitya, would you like to now take it forward with uh, both uh, executive engineers from West Bengal and Orissa? Uh, and then we can go to uh, Mr. Bimal. Yeah. Sure. Thanks, Raman. So, Mr. Mahapatra, nice to meet you again. E meet you, rather. I had met you in uh, Ganjam long ago. Um, so I think what we've heard so far uh, from uh, Ms. Singh and Mr. Chaudhary, uh, it uh, points to our uh, third area of discussion very well, which is what kind of a systems approach is required um, instead of providing spot services. And I think I would like, you, like to hear from you and Mr. Paul, uh, maybe Mr. Mahapatra first, um, as you are the technical wing that uh, is supposed to provide uh, guidance and inputs for uh, drinking water, especially, 
both single village, multi-village uh, kind of schemes. Uh, and also in uh, also responsible for water quality and uh, disaster resilience. And I think in Odisha we have a lot of um, a lot of that. Uh, you know, um, making sure that the water schemes that are coming up are uh, resilient to disasters, floods, droughts, and cyclones, especially. Um, so, could you please tell us uh, how PHED is moving or should move towards? Uh, systems approach and uh, so that we're looking at a more integrated approach to uh, drinking water, uh, you know, pipe, pipe drinking water in rural areas. And I'll come to Mr. Paul with the same question after that from, from the Bengal perspective. Sir, Namaskar. Uh, is this is 100% APS, this is a household tap consumption by 2024. Accordingly, uh, in our states, we are moving in this way. We are constructing the source. The, the initially in the single village schemes, groundwater was the source. And uh, in multi village and in schemes, uh, we are taking surface source as surface is more sustainable. And particularly, we are taking mega pipes and some schemes because most of the reports are uh, uh, ground sources are not so. Adequate. So we are taking sources from the rivers and taking 100, 200, 300 villages in one scheme. And in these schemes, we are constructing those schemes and uh, side by side, they were from making village water and central committee, which is a part of the Gram Punchat. Presently, 40% uh, village water and central uh, committee has already been formed and their training is going to be. Uh, by March, and also ice activities are going on to involve village and water and sanitation permit. Specifically, we are involving women research groups. Uh, most of the single village schemes, which are already completed, in these schemes, women research groups are acting very promptly. They are collecting user fee, and 100% uh, household consumption is there, and also for maintenance, uh, the gram panchayat is taking the charge. And user fees is collecting from the households through the women research groups. Some of the examples I have seen that very good uh, maintenance is going on there. For major repairing or any maintenance, government is taking uh, from 15 states fund. But uh, normal minor maintenance is done by the by village water and sanitation committee. Only thing is we have to strengthen the village water and sanitation committee. Technical part, we are supporting our rural water supply plantation organization. Now, initially, we are in the rural development department. Now, we are on panchayat department. So, we are the technical part of Gram Panchayat. Our junior engineers at block level, they are supporting in technically to the Gram Panchayat. So any scheme, if there is some requirement or technical, then they are going forward. And village water sanitation community training is on the process. After strengthening, we are hoping that it will come into force with a proper maintenance system and a sustainability. In source sustainability, mostly presently we are taking reverse sources, so surface source. Uh, surface sources are water in quality it is very good. And we are also making treatment plants. Uh, presently, more than 75 mega pipes these schemes are under progress, and some are also completed. In my district, also I am going to complete one mega by. February 15th, and three other schemes are there where more than 500 villages will be in uh, profited. So, uh, the main guideline of Jaljivan Mission is long term sustainability. And that for long term sustainability, only involvement of PRI and village water and sun committee, if it will be properly formed and will be trained properly, then it will be successful. Sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mahapatra. Uh, Mr. Paul, could you uh, kindly tell us from the West Bengal perspective what's happening about uh, a systems approach towards you know integrating uh, village water to, towards providing a rural drinking water supply? Okay, Namaskar. Uh, first of all, good afternoon to all of you. First, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Water for People, Susan and IRC 
uh, for uh, organizing such a important webinar institutional mechanism uh, for the delivery of was service cap uh, key gaps challenges and possible solutions so uh, uh, in india uh, about 70% population lives in villages uh, so if uh, uh, your J our jj mission emphasizes on the uh, tap connection in every rural household so uh, for uh, for delivering any services uh, we need a certain institution as uh, as a, in case of uh, jjm also we have uh, a certain uh, institutional mechanism uh, in the uh, uh, your uh, national level state level district level as well as in village level so uh, 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 this uh, uh, state district and uh, your national level uh, these uh, all are uh, government entity and in the village level we uh, faces a lot of challenges uh, that i would like to share uh, uh, in this uh, 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 my uh, speech so uh, your uh, in uh, I, I will uh, in in case of birbhum district uh, here uh, the uh, topographical scenario is very uh, your i must say, I must say uh, uh, this is a uh, uh, you, you can see here a lot of uh, areas where there is lots of uh, water and uh, some area there is very scarce uh, water is very scarce so in those areas uh, we need to uh, think more uh, more uh, more uh, uh, technology how to deal with them so uh, uh, so challenges with us is that how to uh, make us sustainable and equitable uh, your resources in terms of uh, quality and uh, as well as uh, quantity so uh, sensitization of pri bodies is must uh, as of uh, all of no all of us know uh, that pri bodies plays an important role for village infrastructure so if we could uh, if we could <coughs> sensitize them uh, uh, by with the help of isa i i think the major role uh, here uh, we need to play uh, 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 by isa uh, agencies uh, we are the three uh, pillars your demo, uh, your bureaucrat technocrat and the political uh, uh, representative but the fourth pillar i would uh, like to uh, share that uh, your isa need to be play a very important role uh, for this without sensitizing uh, the pri bodies this kind of sustainable uh, delivery as well as equitable delivery is not at all possible because uh, as per jjm guideline we we uh, we concentrated that uh, 55 liters minimum uh, per household we need to deliver uh, uh, with quality with proper quality so pro quality and quantity we will assure but the equitable quantity uh, the uh, every uh, household should uh, get the equal quantity of uh, water that need to be ensured by the pri bodies and here uh, here is the need of isas uh, i think they need to play a vital role by sensitizing the uh, pri bodies uh, our previous speakers told uh, that uh, our government also uh, emphasizing by formation of vwscs uh, uh, also in as per jjm guideline uh, also is there uh, we also trying to uh, uh, we also trying to uh, uh, in in case of birbhum and west bengal we also trying to follow the same the uh, bottom up approach as uh, which is the main aim of the uh, jjm mission so uh, but but the challenges is uh, is that uh, they are not yet uh, 
uh, i think the uh, pri bodies are not yet properly uh, uh, capacitated so i think uh, three main uh, main things that need for a pri body is uh, 3m i must say 3m manpower machinery and money so machinery and money the government and we the as a phd department we can uh, uh, supply to them or support to them and manpower uh, that has to be uh, capacitated uh, uh, by uh, i think iss or uh, with the help of uh, public representative or the uh, administration so uh, uh, with this uh, with this uh, aspects i would uh, like to uh, thank uh, the teams for organizing such a uh, nice uh, uh, your uh, topic and i would like to share a few uh, uh, in case of birbhum uh, i would like to share a few uh, success story for that a uh, single village scheme our previous speaker told about the single village scheme Sin single village scheme is uh, naturally uh, uh, it is a very good scheme it um, actually uh, maintenance point of view it is very good but we face many chal uh, most challenges for uh, in case of multi village scheme in multi village scheme uh, actually source sustainability we have to look as well as the management of a long long uh, distribution system it is the major challenge and uh, uh, in case of birbhum we also seen whenever we handed over some uh, schemes to wscs they are uh, they are not able to manage the multi villages schemes so if we uh, need to uh, maintain this kind of multi villages scheme we need to think certain mechanism i think more uh, powerful mechanism we need to build so that this kind of multi village scheme uh, can be look after uh, uh, in a proper way so i would like to uh, end uh, my speech here thank you thank you mr paul um there is a question and i'll pose it to both you and mr mahapatra in turn um what when you're implementing pipe water schemes in uh, disaster prone areas uh what uh, can be done to ensure that uh, there is safe and consistent uh, drinking water throughout the year uh so what would the roles be for example of the phed which is your technical wing and say the panchayati raj institutions in in uh, ensuring this and i think both birbhum and uh, ganjam they fall in uh, disaster prone area so i'll propose it to you mr paul first and then mr mahapatra <coughs> Uh, actually birbhum is a drought prone area uh, drought is here uh, uh, in uh, certain areas uh, in the uh, western part of birbhum so hum log yahan par kya karte hain abhi jo quality issue yahan par thoda sa kam hai thoda sa kam hai bole to yahan par jo issue hai maximum hi hai fluoride ka kuch issue hai और जो मेजर इशू है वो है मतलब स्केसिटी ऑफ वाटर इन द वेस्टर्न पार्ट हम लोग वहाँ पर जैसे मिस्टर महापात्र ने बताया कि हम लोग वहाँ पर स्कीम ऐसे सिलेक्ट करते हैं ताकि वो सस्टेनेबल हो तो सस्टेनेबल तो ग्राउंड वाटर है नहीं क्योंकि वो डी टी एच जोन है क्योंकि आफ्टर फोर और फाइव फीट्स वी गेट्स रॉक रॉक और कोल लाइक दैट तो तो इसीलिए हम लोगों को क्या करना पड़ता है मल्टी विलेज स्कीम ही सोचना पड़ता है वहां पर सिंगल विलेज स्कीम इज नॉट अ गुड ऑप्शन राइट नाउ सो अभी हम लोगों को जो करते हैं मैक्सिमम मल्टी विलेज स्कीम और वो रिवर बैंक वो हम लोग एम्फोसाइज करते हैं ताकि वो रिवर बैंक या बेड में हो क्योंकि वहाँ का क्वालिटी इशू थोड़ा मैक्सिमम बेटर है क्योंकि अभी तक रिवर बैंक या बेड में जो हम लोग सोर्स पाए गए हैं वो क्वालिटी इशू उसमें कोई नहीं है तो हम लोग इसी तरह यहाँ पर डील कर रहे हैं फिलहाल जो सस्टेनेबल सोर्स है वो रिवर जो यहाँ का मैक्सिमम ये पेरिलियल रिवर नहीं है फिर भी जो सब सरफेस जो वाटर है वो अच्छा क्वालिटी का मिलता है इसी को लेके हम लोग यहाँ पर सर्व कर रहे हैं 
Okay, thank you, Mr. Paul. Mr. Mahapatra, from Ganjam's point of view, um, up, uh, kya kar rahe to ensure that you know pipe water schemes, especially given that uh, Ganjam is prone to disasters, uh, what is being done to ensure uh, quality and quantity? And what are the roles of different uh, of the three verticals that we've talked about and ISCs as well? Sir, in my Ganjam district, there are 2,791 villages. I have to wait earlier, more than 1,600 villages, nearly 60% villages are covered with a single village and with groundwater source. In Ganjam, more six blocks are special blocks where we are. In alternate years, we are facing water quality problem due to saline. And some parts are heavy portions, they are facing iron problem. And in some other parts, there is collapse window. So, uh, ground water prospectus is very less, uh, water quality and uh, quantity both. So, presently in Daljivan Mission, what they have taken in one recipient river is there, which is the only one adequate water that is river in Ganjam district. From this river, we are taking surface source and we have planned for four blocks. One major project we have taken for 11 blocks from River Mahanadi, which is nearly 60 kilometers from Ganjam district. That already we have planned in Satan Pan, also in detail already prepared. From the River Mahanadi is a perennial source and water is plenty available. From there, water will be drawn and will be treated and will be provided to each household. So 11 plus 4, 15 blocks covered. The rest, uh, out of 27 blocks, in three reservoirs are there. They are also irrigation dams from where we have planned and already work started. One is the Salia Dia Reservoir, one is the Bhura Reservoir, and the Bagam Reservoir. From there, water throughout the year, the dam already completed and its capacity also uh, <coughs> increased. So now we are in a position to supply surface water with proper treatment to the households. So water uh, uh, availability will be there. And secondly, in this Rusipilia uh, River, one anechoid has been planned so that water will be stored and it will be supplied during peak season. So there is no problem. I think within two to three years, we will be able to provide sufficient water in terms of quality and quantity also. In terms of uh, sustainability, what we have done technically, we are supporting and uh, our ISA, uh, Gramdikas and other three, four agencies, they are engaged for uh, formation of a village water and sanitation committee. They are taking ice activities, capacity building, and other handhold capacity to the villagers and specifically to the SSG groups. Their system is already in three months and 40 percent villages they have covered. And we are also monitoring them. We are going to be as the facilitator. The village water and sanitation committee, though, where the water supply already completed. They have taken the charge and also successful their maintenance. So we are hoping that this system will be very good system. Like uh, West Bengal, part also uh, we are supporting technical, but uh, finances also. PRI members and ISA, NGOs, their role is very much important to uh, make the project successful. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mahapatra. Uh, Raman, any questions from you? Any points of view? Yeah, one, uh, you know, uh, important one question is there. Uh, may I add? May I answer? Yeah, please. Uh, someone is asking uh, about the river bank. Uh, so, river bank, jo hai, river bank, uh, hum log isi liye, uh, karte hai. Uh, river bank is a good source. और वहां पर साफ सरफेस वाटर है क्योंकि बीरभूम अगर देखेंगे तो बीरभूम का जो देयर आर फ्यू रिवर्स बट मोस्ट ऑफ इट आर नॉन नॉन पेरेनियल रिवर तो अभी uh, हम लोग क्या है सरफेस वाटर वहां का यूज नहीं कर सकते हैं तो बैंक में जो करते हैं क्योंकि बैंक का क्या है और एक ये आपला नॉन पेरेनियल अगर रिवर होगा तो और एक चीज आप लोग देखेंगे कि देयर आर सर्टेन डैम्स ऑन द अपस्ट्रीम साइड सो हम लोग अगर आपका रिवर uh, बेड में चला जाएंगे तो क्या होता है जो ओ, आपका जब पानी छोड़ता है वो फ्लास्ट फ्लड जब होता है तो मोस्ट मोस्ट टाइम 
the uh, tube well at the uh, river bed uh, got damaged so hum log kya karte bank mein karte maximum jagah mein jahan par bank uh, uh, matlab bank mein jahan par hai matlab source wo hum log bank ke upar hi uh, concentrate karte wahan ka saaf surface water hi lete hain और बेड में कहाँ कहाँ पर लेना होता है जहां पर मान लीजिए कुछ रिवर्स ऐसे भी है बीरभूम में जहां आपका छ फीट या आठ फीट हार्डली ऊपर में सैंड है उसके बाद आपका रॉक या कोल्स आ जाता है तो वहां पर हम लोगों का देर इज नो अदर ऑप्शन बट टू गो फॉर रिवर बेड ट्यूबवेल तो रिवर बेड ट्यूबवेल भी है फिर भी वो दिज आर दब सरफेस वाटर बिकॉज सरफेस वाटर को हम नहीं लेते वहाँ फिल्टर फिल्टर लगाया होता है वो फिल्टर का पानी लेके क्लोरिनेशन करके यूज करते हैं सो वी आर वी आर नॉट गोइंग फॉर ट्रीटमेंट एनी फर्दर अदर ट्रीटमेंट इन केस ऑफ बीरभूम डिस्ट्रिक्ट thanks uh, about mm-hmm. that uh, important uh, uh, clarification. I have one question for both of you. Uh, one of the issue is that you know you were uh, erst while Uh, the public health engineering department was supposed to implement the uh, rural drinking water supply in a phased manner that also at the community level uh, not necessarily at the household level now the, when the jeevan jaljeevan mission has started your job has uh, multiplied into dip, you know multiple uh, you know level folds so uh, the the uh, you know workforce uh, you know under each one of you are the same it does not enhance uh, to the kind of uh, multifold uh, uh, you know asks that has come to you so in in this light uh, it is important how are how are you kind of looking at plans and uh, technical proposals and dprs that are continuously flowing to your offices what kind of arrangement have you devised Uh, for uh, you know looking at the quality of the proposals looking at the technical issues of the proposal how are you passing them how are you agreeing uh, with the technical financial you know kind of arrangement what is the mechanism that you have developed for over to you both over to both of you yes sir uh, in our state uh, <coughs> water quality monitoring ke liye swatantra ek sanstha ko diya gaya hai jo har district mein wo manpower employed kiye hai वो लोग ने इंडिपेंडेंटली जहाँ काम हो रहा है वहाँ क्वालिटी मॉनिटरिंग कर रहे हैं वो रेगुलरली वीकली बेसिस हमको रिपोर्ट कर रहा है और हमारा हाई लेवल सचिव को रिपोर्ट कर रहा है हम उनके ऊपर जब कोई भी प्रॉब्लम है उनको इमीडिएट जाके रेस्टोर करते हो और एक पार्ट है और आई जो है वो आई एस जैसे है आई आई एस एक्ट करके मीडियम से बनाते हैं जैसे हम जो बी पी आर बना जाते हैं इसके लिए कंसल्टेंट को दिया जाता है इंडिपेंडेंट और कंसल्टेंट सर्वे डिजाइन करके डिटेल डिटेल बनाते हैं उसमें हमारा जे लोग ने सपोर्ट करते हैं हमारा इंजीनियर स्टाफ सपोर्ट करते हैं और वो जो टेक्निकल स्टाफ है डिटेल बनाने वाले कंसल्टेंट वो लोग सब करके हमको देते हैं और एक प्रेजेंटेशन करते हैं हमारा हाइड्रा सर्वे पास हमारे पास तो क्या क्या ऐसे मेरिट है क्या क्या डिमेट है हम उनको आइडेंटिफाई करते हैं और फिर रिक्टिफाई करते हैं और उसको भी फील्ड में जाके गाँव में एक मीटिंग होता है उसका फाइनल आह्वान किया जाता है डीपी आता है उसके बाद काम शुरू होता है Okay. In uh, West Bengal, Bengal, how are you doing? Uh, uh, in uh, West Bengal, यहाँ पर मैं थोड़ा बोलना चाहता हूँ अगर आप वेस्ट बेंगल का पानी का अगर चित्र देखेंगे तो वेस्ट बेंगल में पाइप वाटर सप्लाई स्कीम है कवरेज ऑलमोस्ट सिक्सटी परसेंट फॉर द स्टेट एंड अगर जब जे जे एम चालू हुआ तो जे जे एम स्टार्ट होने के बाद हम लोग वो Uh, मतलब घर घर में पानी जो बोल रहे हैं तो एफ uh, uh, जो कनेक्शन चालू किया तो वो अभी अराउंड ट्वेंटी परसेंट के आसपास है तो हम लोगों का क्या है अभी लॉन्ग लॉन्ग वे टू गो तो अभी लो हैंगिंग फ्रूट्स की तरह हम लोग फर्स्ट जो ट्राई किया यहाँ पर uh, कर रहे हैं काम अभी रेट्रोफिटिंग जो रिलेटिवली न्यूअर स्कीम न्यूअर कमीशन स्कीम है वो वहाँ पर हम लोग रेट्रोफिटिंग कर रहे और साइड बाई साइड जो ओल्ड कमीशन स्कीम है जो थोड़ा डेस्टेस कंडीशन में है जिसका पाइप मतलब क्वालिटी डिटोडेट हो गया तो वहाँ पर हम लोग क्या कर रहे हैं ऑगमेंट कर रहे हैं रेजुमिनेट कर रहे हैं तो ये दो लो हैंगिंग फ्रूट्स है ये तो डिपार्टमेंट खुद ही कर रहा है यहाँ पर उतना टेक्निकल एक्सपर्टाइज मतलब नहीं लग रहा है 
अभी आपका जो मेन क्वेश्चन है कि मैनीफोल्ड में काम बढ़ गया वो तो बढ़ गया है क्योंकि अगर देखेंगे तो अगर सिक्सटी परसेंट ऑलमोस्ट फिफ्टी ईयर्स में या फोर्टी ईयर्स में हुआ है रेस्ट ऑफ द फोर्टी परसेंट वी नीड टू डू इट बाय टू और थ्री इयर्स और डिस्ट्रिक्ट का भी अगर सीनारी बोले तो ऐसा ही है यहाँ का डिस्ट्रिक्ट और भी थोड़ा सा ये है यहाँ पर थर्टी थर्टी फाइव परसेंट कवरेज है वी नीड टू डू हंड्रेड परसेंट कवरेज बाई ट्वेंटी फोर सो ऑलमोस्ट विद इन थ्री ईयर्स वी नीड टू डू मेनी टाइम्स वर्क सो अभी क्या कर रहे हैं तो लो हैंगिंग फ्रूट्स जो है वो उतना हम लोगों को दिक्कत नहीं हो रहा है मगर जो प्लानिंग मतलब न्यू जो स्कीम है अगर उसका देखेंगे तो न्यू स्कीम्स के लिए हम लोग आउटसोर्सिंग कर रहे हैं तो आउटसोर्सिंग अभी जो डी पी आर प्रिपरेशन इज ह्यूज ह्यूज वर्क है तो उसका हम लोग आउटसोर्सिंग कर रहे हैं क्वालिटी इशूज या मॉनिटरिंग इशूज थोड़ा हो रहा है तो क्वालिटी के लिए हम लोग थर्ड पार्टी इंस्पेक्शन एजेंसी को भी यहाँ पर डिप्लॉय किया हुआ है और आईसी uh, एक्टिविटीज कुछ कर रहे हैं आउटसोर्सिंग करके आईएसए uh, जो है आईएसए का भी हम लोग एक्सप्लोर किया है यहाँ का गवर्नमेंट uh, भी अभी बोल रहा है कि uh, मतलब आईएसए को रिक्रूट जल्दी से जल्दी हो जाए तो अभी अभी तक आई एस एक्टिविटी इतना स्टार्ट नहीं हुआ मगर वो हम लोग ट्राई कर रहे हैं कि उसका भी जल्दी से जल्दी स्टार्ट करा दें ओके थैंक्स ओवर टू यू नित्या वी कैन नाउ हियर प्रॉब्ली विमल बिफोर यू बिफोर वी गो फॉर द अदर रिमेनिंग क्वेश्चन या आई वाज जस्ट गोइंग टू आस्क विमल जी फॉर अ फ्यू फॉर हिज कमेंट आई थिंक आईएसएस के बारे में काफी बात हो चुकी है और उनके रोल्स भी काफी डिफाइन कर कर रहे हैं कि जल जीवन मिशन और स्वच्छ भारत मिशन में आईएसएस का क्या की क्या भूमिका रहेगी विमल जी आप को क्या लगता है आईएसएस की जो भूमिका जो रोल डिफाइन किया है अभी जो गाइडलाइंस में है उसके लिए आईएसएस के पास उतनी कैपेसिटी और फंडिंग है Uh, एक सवाल तो वो हुआ दूसरा अगर तो आई को टेक्निकल और एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन और पंचायती राज के इंस्टीट्यूशंस के साथ काम करना है तो आपको क्या लगता है कि आई को कि को किस तरह की सपोर्ट की जरूरत है कि वो अपनी भूमिका अच्छी तरह निभा सके और तीसरी बात यह है कि आई मेरा हमारा मानना था कि हर डिस्ट्रिक्ट में कम से कम एक आई को होना जरूरी है लेकिन डिस्ट्रिक्ट क्या बहुत बड़ा एरिया हो जाता है आई को संभालने के लिए और तो कि यानी कि ब्लॉक में एक आए, एक एक ब्लॉक में एक आई होना चाहिए तो किस स्केल पे आई एस काम करना चाहिए थैंक यू निजा जी एंड रमन भाई एंड सभी को नमस्ते मैं विमल हूँ न्यू सीट से और हम बेसिकली मध्य प्रदेश और महाराष्ट्र के कुछ ट्राइबल डिस्ट्रिक्ट्स में हम काम कर रहे हैं जल जीवन मिशन को सपोर्ट कर रहे हैं एज आई एस ए नित्या जी जो आपका क्वेश्चन था कि एक तो आई एस ए के कैपेसिटी की बात अगर हम करते हैं तो डेफिनेटली इसमें जो हम फेस कर रहे हैं मतलब हमको जो लगता है वो ये है कि एक तो जिस तरह का रोल डिफाइन है गाइडलाइन में जल जीवन मिशन के तो आ, उसको थोड़ा सा एक बार आ, देखने की जरूरत है देखने की जरूरत है कि अभी भी हम चूंकि जो आईएसए का रोल है वो मेजरली जो है वो पंचायत और उनके इंस्टीट्यूशन और आ, समुदाय के साथ आ, काम करने का है जिसमें कैपेसिटी बिल्डिंग एक बहुत बड़ा पार्ट है आईएसए में और मोबिलाइजेशन जो बहुत बड़ा पार्ट है लेकिन आ, अभी जो हम आ, 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 देख पा रहे हैं या जो हम आ, कर रहे हैं उस तरह से लगता है कि आ, अभी भी आई जो है वो एक्टिविटी मोड के तरफ है एंड सेकेंडरी अगर गवर्नमेंट्स की भी हम देखें या डिपार्टमेंट की भी देखें तो रोल क्लैरिटी में कहीं ना कहीं अभी गैप्स हैं गवर्नमेंट 
के फंक्शनरीज को लेके चाहे वो फील्ड फील्ड फंक्शनरीज हो एटलीस्ट यहाँ तक डिस्ट्रिक्ट लेवल तक का कि एग्जैक्टली आई एस का रोल क्या है सेकेंड uh, जो हम बात कर रहे थे वो कैपेसिटी की बात कर रहे थे तो डेफिनेटली बहुत सारे आई को इम्पैनल किया गया है और सभी अपने अपने एरियाज में काम कर रहे हैं लेकिन uh, चूंकि जल जीवन मिशन में सिर्फ एक uh, वाटर सप्लाई और ही जो है वो पार्ट नहीं है वहां पे सोर्स सस्टेनेबिलिटी और ऑपरेशन एंड मेंटेनेंस एक बड़ा आ, सवाल है जो हमारे पुराने लास्ट जो हमारे लर्निंग्स हैं वो ऑपरेशन मेंटेनेंस को लेके बहुत अच्छे अनुभव नहीं रहे हैं वहां पे मुझे लगता है कि आईएसएस की कैपेसिटी बिल्डिंग भी करनी होगी ये आ, तीनों एस्पेक्ट्स को लेके हाउस होल्ड कनेक्शन वाटर सप्लाई एंड सेकेंड एंड सेकेंड एंड थर्ड जो हम बात कर रहे हैं वो सोर्स सस्टेनेबिलिटी एंड ऑपरेशन एंड मेंटेनेंस के पार्ट को लेके थोड़ा सा मैं इसमें जो हमारा अनुभव है जो हमने काम किया है चूंकि आई एस ए अभी हम जे जे एम में जुड़े हैं लेकिन हम पिछले पांच साल से वाटर एड एंड पी एच ई डी एंड एन आई डब्ल्यू सी वाई डी ये तीनों ही डिंडोरी डिस्ट्रिक्ट में हम काम कर रहे हैं और यहाँ पे जो फोकस्ड एरिया जिसको हम चेंज लाना चाह रहे थे वो था कि कम्युनिटी बेस्ड वाटर सप्लाई सिस्टम्स को हम कैसे इस्टेब्लिश कर पा रहे हैं और इसमें एक अच्छा मैं उदाहरण दूंगा कि हमने कम्युनिटी बेस्ड मतलब वो कौन से सोर्सेस होंगे जो कि वाटर सप्लाई के लिए जो है जिसको कम्युनिटी प्रेफर करती है और हमारे यहाँ एक अच्छा निकल के आया कि स्प्रिंग बेस्ड वाटर सप्लाई सिस्टम्स को हमने स्टेब्लिश करने की कोशिश की है डिंडोरी में कोऑर्डिनेशन पीएचईडी के साथ कोऑर्डिनेशन में तो एक ये बड़ा अनुभव रहा है जिसे अभी पीएचईडी भी अपने लेवल पे सोच रहा है कि हम किन सोर्सेस को लेके आगे बातचीत करें और चूंकि वो कम्युनिटी ड्रिवेन है तो काफी मतलब तीन साल पांच साल का हमारा एक एक्सपीरियंस भी उसके साथ जुड़ा है कि लो 